This is what breaks my heart, not just the disease, not even the suffering. What truly breaks my heart is when we take away hope from people who desperately need it. When someone walks into a doctor's office like this, terrified because their kidney numbers don't look good, and they walk out believing it's all downhill from here, that dialysis is inevitable, that there's no way out. And too often this happens because doctors are giving advice based on fear, not facts. They're telling patients that the one thing that might save their kidneys, a low carb keto or carnivore diet is dangerous. That changes today. Day. Let me be clear, keto doesn't destroy your kidneys. High blood sugar does. I've been practicing medicine for over 30 years. And for the last 12 to 13 years, I've seen things I honestly didn't think were possible. Patients with kidney disease improving, glomerular filtration rates going up, creatinine going down, urine protein dropping. And no, it didn't happen because of another pill. It happened because they changed what they put on their plate. Now here's the painful part. Many of these patients came to me after seeing their nephrologist. You think a kidney specialist would be thrilled to hear their patients are cutting carbs, losing weight, improving their blood sugar. But instead, they were told to stop, told that keto is too dangerous for someone with kidney problems. And when I ask why, it almost always come back to the same outdated fear. Protein. Let's get this straight. Keto is not a high protein diet. It's moderate protein, high fat, and a very low carb diet. But somehow we've lumped keto with a bodybuilder level protein intake. And that misunderstanding is causing real harm. Because when doctors spread fear about keto without understanding the mechanisms, patients miss out on one of the most powerful tools will have for metabolic healing. So let's talk about what actually harms the kidneys. The number one cause of kidney failure in the United States is diabetes. Not protein, not keto, it's chronically elevated blood sugar. When glucose levels stay high for too long, it damages the tiny blood vessels in the kidneys, the glomeruli. Think of them as coffee filters. When those filters get gummed up, they stop working. Protein leaks into the urine, blood pressure rises, waste products build up, and all of this is worsened by insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia. Insulin isn't just a blood sugar hormone. It's a powerful driver of sodium retention. High insulin raises blood pressure, increases inflammation, and contributes to endothelial dysfunction, all of which damages the kidneys further. This is a slow, relentless process, and yet most conventional approaches don't even target the root. They focus on blood pressure meds, glucose-lowering drugs, and eventually dialysis. And what if we could stop the damage at its source? That's where keto and carnivore diets come in, because when you cut carbs, you reduce the need for insulin. You lower blood sugar, you decrease inflammation, you take the pressure off those delicate kidney filters, you stop flooding the body with glucose that it can't properly use. That's not dangerous, that's healing. And let me tell you what I've seen in my clinic. Before I started using low carb diets, I can't recall a single patient whose glomerular filtration rate improved. Not one. We just watched them slowly decline while adjusting meds. But once I started recommending keto, that changed. I saw creatinine drop. I saw urine protein normalize. I saw patients come off blood pressure medicines. And I saw them regain something they hadn't had in years, hope. Now, some of you might be wondering, is there research to support this? Absolutely. One of my colleagues in the UK, Dr. David Unwin, has done phenomenal work as a family physician, showing that carb restriction not only improves diabetes, but also kidney function. His patients lose weight, lower their A1C, and improve their kidney labs without dialysis, without pills, just real food. Why aren't more nephrologists talking about this? Why is a family doctor leading the charge while kidney specialists stay silent? I don't say that to insult anyone. I say that because it's time we wake up. It's time we start questioning whether our training is truly serving our patients. Now, let's be fair. There is nuance. In later stages of kidney disease, stages four through five, you may need to adjust protein intake. You may need to monitor potassium or phosphorus more carefully. But early stage kidney disease, prediabetes, metabolic syndrome, these are the people who can benefit most from low carb diets. And yet, they're the ones being scared away from them. It's time we start blaming the wrong villain. Protein is not the enemy. Fat is not the enemy. Carbs and specifically excess sugar and starch are the real culprits. They spike insulin, they feed inflammation, and they accelerate kidney decline. And here's something 
something else most doctors don't tell you. When you start keto, you're not just helping your kidneys, you're helping your entire metabolic system, your brain, your heart, your liver, your waistline. It's all connected. When insulin goes down, healing begins. It's that simple. So how do you know if keto is working for your kidneys? You watch your labs, your glomerular filtration rate, your creatinine, your BUN, your microalbumin to creatinine ratio. You monitor your A1C, your fasting glucose, and especially your fasting insulin. You track your blood pressure. And yes, if possible, get your cystatin C checked. It's a better marker for kidney function in people on low carb diets because it isn't skewed by changes in muscle mass. And listen, I've had patients improve every single one of those numbers. One woman came to me with early kidney disease. Her nephrologist said, don't go on keto. She did it anyway. One year later, her glomerular filtration rate had gone up 15 points. Her blood pressure was perfect. Her insulin was normal. And the nephrologist, he said, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. The only thing that disappoints me is that he didn't ask what she was doing. That needs to stop. And that's the power of food. Now to my colleagues, the doctors, the nurses, the dietitians, if you're hearing this and thinking, what about the guidelines? I get it. We've been taught to follow a cautious path, but what happens when the cautious path leads our patients to dialysis, when it robs them of their health? At some point, we have to stop following the protocol and start following the results. There's a saying in functional medicine, test, don't guess. But I'd add, look, don't assume. Look at the labs. Look at the lives being changed. Look at the data from doctors like Dr. Unwin. Look at your own patients. Because once you do, you'll see what I've seen. You'll see that kidney disease isn't always a one-way street. It can be slowed. It can be reversed. And yes, it can be healed. To the patients watching this, don't let outdated advice steal your future. Don't let fear stop you from trying what may be the very thing your body needs. Work with a provider who understands nutrition. I'll have a link to search engines to help you find doctors in your area in the comments. Track your labs, listen to your body, and never stop believing that healing is possible. To the doctors, let's stop being afraid of keto. Let's stop being afraid of our patients getting better without us. Let's do better. Read the nutritional research. Learn the mechanisms. And most of all, be willing to change your mind in the face of better evidence. I'll close with this. Keto doesn't destroy kidneys. High blood sugar does. I've seen it. I've lived it. I've helped patients reclaim their lives because they dare to challenge the system. And I hope you will too. And if this message gave you hope, drop a heart in the comments. Let's flood this platform with stories of healing. And if you're a clinician who has witnessed the same thing, let us know. We need to hear from you. We need your voice because together we can change the narrative. Let's do it.